Hey guys, thanks for joining for episode Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at Witless Wizards. This is a new game by Draw Lab. It is a two to four player game that takes roughly 15 to 20 minutes to play. And it is a competitive game, so the players are trying to eliminate the other players and be the last person left alive. So in the game itself, each player is going to be playing a wizard, one of the most powerful wizards in the world. And over the years, the planets have aligned and teleported all those wizards to an alternate dimension where they have to battle it out to determine who is the best wizard. Unfortunately for the wizards, they've grown old and forgotten most of their powerful spells. So it's up to them to try to remember them and be able to defeat the other wizards in time to be the overall winner in the other game. So my opinions on this one, I had a good time with it. I would recommend it. And it's a great little filler game for in between heavier games or if your group's into competitive games, this is a nice little one that you can throw down. Very easy to teach and understand. There's not a lot of complication with the rules and it plays very well. This is also probably a good one for families. I would recommend it, uh, even though it is competitive. So it depends on, on how your family does with that kind of stuff. But definitely enjoyed this one. And the artwork was a lot of fun with this as well. And they also have a couple little expansion packs you can pick up to add additional... Uh, uh, decks to the to the playing area to keep things random and fresh every game so of course if you guys enjoy with these videos if you like what i do please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel as it really does help me to continue to grow and be able to bring these games to you guys if you want to stay up to date on all my videos also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime i release new content so let's head to the table and i'll teach you guys how to play there's one die included in the game which is going to have two sides with a single sword on them two sides with a double sword one side with a triple, and one side with a blank. Moving over to the cards, each card is going to have the name of the card at the top, along with an icon that will tell you what set it's from. And there are five sets included in the base game. We have Medieval, Pirates, Samurai, Sci-Fi, and Wizards. From there, then there's an image of the card, and then the icon that shows the type of card it is. And there are three different types included in the game. We have Offensive Equipment, Defensive Equipment, and Special Equipment. And these are also coordinated, color coordinated. So we have red cards being the offensive equipment, blue cards being defensive, and purple cards being special equipment. Next to it, if it's an attack or defense card, it will list a number that will add to the attack or the defense. From there, then you also have the, the set that it's part of, again, which is medieval or whatever set. On the side of the card is the concentration cubes it'll grant at the end of that player's turn. And then finally, some of the cards will also have text that will determine or add different abilities to that card that you'll resolve when you're using it. Then we have standard equipment cards, which will list those there. And those will be dealt out at the beginning of the game. And when those are discarded, they're simply returned to the box. They will not be reshuffled into the equipment deck when it runs out. And then finally we have FAQ cards, which will match each of the sets included in the game. And you'll want to bring these out for the sets that are included, as they'll have important information about some of the cards included in those sets. Each player will either choose or receive a random player board, which is going to list the name of the wizard at the top. And then it'll have that wizard's stamina track, which you'll have a stamina token, which will be placed on the 20 at the beginning of the game. And then as the game goes on, players will lose health and you'll move down that stamina track. And once a player has no health left, they are eliminated from the game. Then underneath that are the three slots for the player's equipment cards. We have offensive equipment, defensive equipment, and special equipment. Each time a player gets a card, they're going to place it in that corresponding slot. And if a player receives another card in that slot, then the card that they have will be discarded and the new card will take its place. For board setup, the first thing that you're going to do is each player is going to choose or be dealt a player board, and then they can set their stamina to 20 on that board. From there, then you're going to choose one player to be the starting player, and you can do this in any manner you want. So the player looks most like a wizard, or simply choosing one. So we're going to have our player up here be our first player, and so each player, starting from that, is going to get a certain set of equipment and concentration cubes. So the first player will receive one concentration cube, and a magical crook of standing. The next player in clockwise order is going to receive one concentration cube and a magical robe of resting. The third player will receive one concentration cube and both a crook and a robe. And the final player will receive two concentration cubes and both of the standard equipment cards as well. From there, then you can place out the rest of the concentration cubes in the middle of the board, as well as the battle die. And then we're going to select the three standard decks. So out of the five that we have, we can either randomly choose three or simply select three. 
So let's go with sci-fi, medieval, and wizards. With those, we can go ahead and shuffle those up. Once you got that shuffle up, you can place that out in the middle of the board. And then finally, if you want to grab the quick reference guy or the FAQ cards for the decks you're using, you can do that as well and place those out. From there, we're ready to move into the game. Witless Wizards is played over an undefined number of rounds, and during each round, each player is going to get to take a turn in clockwise order. During a player's turn, they're going to, it's broken into two phases, the drafting phase and the battle phase. During the drafting phase, the player will get to draw one card and give one card to their opponent. And then during the battle phase, they will attack one of their opponents on their left or right to try to reduce their stamina to zero. The game will end when the last player standing has any health and the rest of the player's stamina have been reduced to zero. And that player will be the overall winner of the game. Moving into the game, it will start with our first player. And so the first player is going to start their turn with the drafting phase. So the first step in the drafting phase is to draw a card from the common deck. And then we're going to choose. We can either keep this card or give it to an opponent. And in a four-player game, it has to be the player to our left or right that we can give the card to. Now, we can also spend a concentration cube to discard this card and redraw another card. Now, we can only do this one time. So with this one, we have the Wizarding Lightning Hat. This is a special item. So this is not a bad card to have. But let's go ahead and give this one away, and hopefully we'll get another one, or a better card. So we're going to go ahead and give it to our player up here. And then we'll go ahead and draw a second card. Now, if this is the, if we kept the first card, then the second card must be given away. And again, with the second card, we do have a choice to spend that concentration cube again to draw a new card. So now we have a robotic eye. This is going to add two to our attack. And it's also going to give us a concentration cube. So this is a pretty good one. So we're going to go ahead and hold on to that. And then we'll move into the second part of our turn. The second phase in a player's turn is the battle phase. And the one important thing to note with this is that the first player is going to skip this phase during their first turn of the game. So at this point, our player over here's turn would be over. And we move to the next player to the left in clockwise order. So our player over here would be the next player to go. So let's go ahead and do this again. We're going to go ahead and do their drafting phase, and then I'll show you the attack phase. So again, real quick, we'll draft, and this is a pretty good card for this player, so they're going to take this one, and then they'll draw one to give away. This is a pretty good attack card as well, so we're going to go ahead and spend our concentration cube and draw a different card instead. Oh, we pulled even a nastier one. So again, on a... On a four player game we have to give it to our player on the right or left so we're going to go ahead and give it to this player over here as it's going to be a little while before they get back in the game or before they have a turn again and then any standard cards that are discarded are simply removed from the game and, and added back to the box so from here then we're moving to the battle phase and so during the battle phase the first thing you're going to do is choose an opponent to your left or right that you wish to attack so we're going to go ahead and attack our player over here because they don't have any defense at this point. Then we're going to go ahead and roll the battle die. And we can do this even if we don't have an offensive item. It's simply just going to count the die itself then. So we do one point of damage. Then we're going to add any bonuses that we have from our offensive item or any other items that give us offensive abilities. So with the Fragile Staff, it's going to give us plus 2 to that, and then we're going to discard to increase its attack value to 6. So we could choose to discard this to bump it all the way up to 6. So it's going to add 2 to this, so that's a total of 3 damage, and so he's going to reduce his damage to 17. Now, if he would have had any defensive abilities or items, then he would have subtracted that from the attack damage coming to him. So, for example, if he would have had the Robe, then he would have only taken 2 damage instead. Now, there's a couple other important things to note. Now, if you are weakened, which are the last five numbers in your stamina track, you can discard and return any number of concentration cubes you have to the pool in order to move your stamina track or heal it one point per cube that you spend. You're up to the maximum of 20. And there's no limit to the number of cubes you can have. And there's no limit to the number of cubes that are in the game. So if you ever run out of cubes, you can use anything else as a substitute if you're playing in a game and the players collect more than you have. From there, the last step in your turn is to receive a number of concentration cubes from the reserve based on the number that you have on the items that, you're show that you have in your inventory. So right now our player would receive one concentration cube as the robe will grant her one. From there then again, it'll move to the next player in clockwise order. 
So let me take you through one more turn. So we're going to move over to Elbus here, and he's going to take his turn. So first off, he'll start with the drafting phase. He's going to draw the top card. Well, this is a pretty good defensive card, so he's going to go ahead and hold on to that, and he'll discard his rogue. And then he's going to draw a second card to give away. So we have... Okay, so this is not a horrible card to give away. And so he has a choice. He can give it to his opponent on his left or right. And if he gives it to this person over here, they're going to have to discard the card that they already have equipped. And this might be a good option for them to get rid of that. So he's going to go ahead and do that and give it to them. And then they'll simply discard their other card. From there, then we're going to move into the battle phase. So again, he'll roll the battle die. And he rolled two, plus he's going to add two more from his offensive item. And then he, he has to choose also who he's going to attack. So he's going to go ahead and go after the player on his right. And so he's going to do a total of four points of damage. And she's got a robe, so that's going to stop one point of that damage. So she's only going to take three points of damage. From there, then the last thing he's going to do is get a number of concentration cubes based on his items that he has. So he has one there. And then it would move over to the last player to take a turn. So our player over here, again, will start the turn by drawing a card. And with this one, it says that we can discard to deny any card given to you by either you or your opponent. So not a bad card to have. But we're going to go ahead and pass on that one and give it to... We'll give it to our player over here because this, this card over here is pretty nasty. We don't want them to have that. So then we'll draw the next card and see what it is. Claymore, really nice card. And we do have another medieval card, so that's going to help us quite a bit on our attack. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then finally, we'll move into the attack phase. So the Claymore is going to give us some pretty good power here. And we're going to go ahead and go on this player because they don't have any defense where this player has a pretty strong defense. So it's going to give us plus four swords if you have any other hat cards, which we do. So it's going to give us a total of six plus whatever we roll. So we rolled two, so that's eight points. And then we also get plus one sword for each hat card you have. So we have two of those, so that's going to give us two more. So that's a whopping 10 points of damage over to our poor player over here. So that's going to drop them all the way down to seven points. So really, really nasty. Very, very powerful attack. Green Dolph is going to do some massive damage, so somebody's going to have to get that card out of his hand. From there, then it would move over to the next player after he collects his concentration cube for his item that he has. And it would be back over to our first player to start the next turn. And again, this is going to continue going until one player is left standing with any health left. And that player will be the overall winner of the game. Well, I hope you guys found this video helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by my Facebook and Twitter accounts and let me know what you guys are doing or playing. Or if you have any requests, please drop them there or in my comment section below as well. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it, and I do take into account everything you guys say to try to make the best possible videos. Also, if you found this video helpful, or if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel, as it really does make a big difference and helps me to continue to grow and bring these games to you guys. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.